good evening, y'all. I'm so excited that you've taken this time to join us for our Wednesday night roundtable. I pray that our roundtable tonight will bless you and help you in your daily walk with Christ. I do want to take this time to remind you that we are live on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. Now, if that's inconvenient for you, why, then you can watch a replay at any time during the week. All that we ask from you is that you like, that you share, that you subscribe, so as many people as possible can be blessed by this vital teaching. I do want to remind you that if you want to sow into the ministry, you can sow online by uh, www.stonyrunchurch.com or by mail at 12481 Harnett Dunn Highway, Dunn, North Carolina, 28334. I pray that this installment of the Wednesday Night Roundtable bless you, and I'll see you soon. All right. Good evening, everyone. Amen. We're glad to have you again yes. on this Wednesday yes. night round table with Praise Stony the Run. Lord. <laughs> well, I, I pray that our internet's working, storming yes. everywhere, and and uh, if you can't catch us live, you watch may have us to on catch replay. us on replay. Yeah. <laughs> After this look, one. <laughs> look at YouTube or Facebook. YouTube yeah. does a really good job. Yeah. I think YouTube does a better job streaming than Facebook does. Yes, so if you do. turn to our face, our YouTube page. You'll or see go a on our website better. and pick it up there because yeah, it's website. going straight to YouTube there also, I believe. So, Amen. So we can go ahead and get it there. Um, we're just excited. All this technological wonders that we have, you know. You get caught up in it sometimes, especially when you don't know that much about it. That's it, right. That's where trouble comes in. Yeah. Um, but guys, we're continuing on our, our, our leading to Easter studies here at Wednesday Night Roundtable. Um, some things going on at the church starting to run this upcoming week, so, um, this Saturday. Um, at yeah. noon. At noon is our Easter egg extravaganza. Egg extravaganza. Egg extravaganza. Like um, come out and have a good time with the family. Uh, we'll have food, lunch provided, um, fun for your, your little ones. Uh, our, 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 some of our children's leader, uh, Miss Haley, yes. she's leading up. So she's got some excited things planned. I can't wait to see. Um, How also, many eggs do we have, Joey? I don't know. There's a lot of eggs. <laughs> I, I remember talking to um, uh, Brother Tom. He said when they tore, tore up the shrub around oh, the... Oh, we found um, we They found, found some eggs, yes, so we, we didn't did do too some. good of a job last that, time. That never got found. Um, but hey, this time we'll, we'll put enough out and um, prizes as well. Um, <laughs> also, coming up for the um, a month, our monthly mission emphasis, I guess is what are they calling it. Monthly, monthly, monthly mission emphasis. Emphasis here yeah. at Stony Run Church is our youth mission trip. Oh, man, I'm excited about the mission trip, guys. It's uh, for the month of April. Uh, our missions is focusing on our youth mission trip coming up in July. Um, man, it's amazing what God has done so far. I mean, yes. We've almost got, I would say, probably 85% of, what we of the money raised That's so right. far. Right. Um, the, the spaghetti uh, fundraiser we had on Sunday was a su huge success. Fabulous success. Oh, man, God, is, God shows out and shows up on time. Um, so I'm excited to see how it, he, he's going to get the rest of it paid and if, and if it's you and, and God, hey, say guys I want to help out you can earmark it to to the youth mission trip to the mission spotlight that's what it is I'm sorry um, for the month of April um, give guys that's who, right. who can get it paid for because um, it's going we got like 17 people going yeah it's going to be 17. a nice, nice so, trip yeah amen yeah. amen so the guys it, it, we're working on that for the whole month of April also April the 11th we have our new member um, family meal. Yes. We're getting ready to take new people in here. We want to eat lunch with you. We want to get to know you. That's we right. want you to get to know us. That's right. This is a relationship. Yes. Not uh, you make one with Christ, but also with a local church that God calls us to do. Uh, he calls you to service. Everyone, everyone that's a Christian is called that's to service. Right. And here at this local church, Stony Run, we we want we want to put you to work. Amen. We want to we want to see what your your talents are, your gifts, That's right. and, 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 and let God use that to the utmost that he can. That's right. um, so join us uh, April the 11th. Let us know if you're interested yes, um, so we make enough food for you. Um, you, you just definitely want to eat. I mean, yes. It'd be bad for you to do a new family and you have to watch me eat. Um, <laughs> and you just sit there listening to me talk and eat. But, um, <laughs> but let us know, guys, because uh, we're excited to get to know you yes. um, and for you to get to know us. Um, also as well. Um, May the 1st, where our men's fellowship breakfast is coming up. We're going to partner with Blackman Grove PFWB. They're going to come and have a speaker for us. And we're going and to cook. And we're going to cook. So all men, uh, youth boys, guys, come on out for that. 
Uh, man, we need to fellowship with each other. We need to grow spiritually with each other. So we want to invite you to that. Yes. We're excited about that. We, uh, we, we, we love partnering up with other churches. Um, Baptist Grove, Pastor Ricky Lee there, and uh, Pastor Greg Tarrant, guys, that they have an awesome ministry there. Uh, we get to hear a great word that morning. Amen. Um, but I think that's all the news yeah. that I have. I don't have somebody giving me a, a dirty look, but we'll continue on, guys. We'll get started this evening. Um, tonight's study is for the four ironies of the cross. Yes. Um, <clears throat> listen, we're, we're in Matthew chapter 27. We'll continue there, the story of Jesus' crucifixion. The thing that runs all through this uh, details is rejection. Yes. Talks about rejection, rejection, rejection. Not only did people fail to see the value of Jesus, they also didn't understand the value of his death. That's right. Man, and I, I think that's something we have problems today yes. as well. Yes. Now listen, guys, this study tonight will track this trail of rejection so that we can avoid, let, track it with us so you can avoid as well with us yes. so that we don't get caught up and, and blind to what yes. God is doing. Amen, Brother Joe. Why don't you open us up in a word of prayer tonight? And Amen. Go ahead and jump in. Amen. Join with me as we pray. Yes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for this opportunity. Yes. Lord, we, we, we just pray, Lord God, through their word tonight that it, yes. our thank ears you, are open, yes. our mind and hearts are open to receive this word, Lord That's God. Right. You're still working, Lord Jesus. Absolutely. Lord God, what you did so many years ago on the hill called Calvary, Lord God, it still has, it has relevance today, Lord God, and yes. it's still working on us today. That's right. Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, those who hear this tonight, Lord God, grow, grow, grow closer to you. Yes. Lord God, those who may be lost here and find their way to the truth that is through Jesus Christ to you, our Father. Be with us tonight as we get closer to Easter and celebrating you every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I guess I can go ahead and read the, uh, the first uh, passage of Scripture tonight. The first teaching point is this. The, the first irony of the crucifixion is that the one who is mocked as king is truly king. Amen. I mean, the whole thing, though, is very ironic to me. The whole, the whole um, leading up to the passion and everything. Because it's like people are saying who Jesus is but don't realize that they're saying who Jesus is. <laughs> like everybody, you know, you know, I mean, it's just all the, all the way through this. So, so we're going to go ahead and read from um, Matthew chapter 27, starting in, um, in verse uh, 27. So we'll read tonight. It says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him, put his own clothes on and, and led him away mm. to be crucified. <clears throat> so, wow. The, the, I mean, talking about rejection, but also the, there's no reverence for who he is. The, and these are people who... Who are not Jewish, no, Roman Gentiles, uh, Gentiles, yes, who who yes. don't know that Jesus came first for the Jew and then for the Gentile, and they have no value of life. No, the Romans no, no, had no value. I mean, they had no value of life. I mean, they they were absolutely, you know, very barbaric when it when it came to to things like this. I mean, crucifixion and and scourging and all these punishments they had. Um, they were very barbaric. Um, you know, they they had no value of um of life. They would expose babies. You know, back then, if you had if you had a boy. Everybody was like, praise the Lord, we got a boy. If you had a girl, they would leave the girl outside to die. Just, I mean, you know, it's just the value of life. There was no value whatsoever. It kind of reminds me of today's world. I'm about to say, in a yes, lot sir, of ways. Pastor Rick. I mean, when we, when we start looking at where we're at in this world, that a lot of folks have no value for life whatsoever. Is that reflection to today's society and how we value, or really lack of no value of life? It, it, it resembles it very good. And, it, and, and even in our society that once, I would say, reverenced God, it may not have followed God all the way, but it did have some reverence for God, and now is really going away, falling away from that. And we're almost a society like Rome. Yes, yes, Amen. very much Amen. so. So what was so ironic about all this, Joey? <laughs> well, it's amazing that, I mean, they, <laughs> that they mocked Jesus. What was it, Pilate, who called Jesus the... The, the king of the Jews. That's right. Says, so you're the king of the so Jews. So you're the king of the Jews. You're the one here to save and bring salvation. Uh, and, and, and how they even mocked him with the, the robe, the purple or scarlet robe, wherever you really read from. But, uh, I mean, 
that robe within itself was a robe only for those who had money. Right, royalty. Uh, right, royalty, yeah, because yeah. to have something that was dyed, it, it meant you had, you had to pay expensive. for it. Yeah. A lot of the fabrics in those times were just bleached, uh, yeah. uh, a whiter, yeah. um, tan probably color. But right, because they really couldn't make things white. No. I mean, that, that was hard for them back then to actually yeah. get something white, white. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was usually, you know, was a, dingy, a dingy, you know, I would white say off-white. Yes, maybe. yes. I mean, they were probably dirty, too. Think about how much they walked around in the, yes. in the atmosphere they lived in. In the crown of thorn um, it, <laughs> that they manipulated it into, a, uh, the thorns they manipulated into a crown. Um, I, I automatically just thought of um, Genesis chapter 22, um, verse 13, the, the ram that was in the thicket of thorns. Yes. I mean, that's what Jesus was. Yes. I, he was, that ram was there for Isaac, and Jesus was there for us. Yes, um, So there, there's a lot of irony, imagery, and it, it goes all through this, um, because the way they mocked Jesus and for who he was, he was truly the king and of And he kings. really was the king. Yes. I yes. mean, he really was, and they, and they were making fun of him. They put, him, put a robe on him, a staff, a crown of thorns. They did all these things. They blindfolded him. They demanded that he prophesy and tell him, well, who's Amen. beating me, who's striking me, all these things that they just, they just kept right on and on. I mean, and, and Jesus just took it. <laughs> I mean, think about that, being falsely accused, being a, a sham of a court, beaten because like you said they, they were that type of society they would beat you the when you had trial and the nearly day of beat execution you, beat you to death yeah, I this mean, literally. was a beating this yeah. wasn't like mom and you messed up at school and dad just got home you got a whooping this was something that, right. that, that yeah. you you if you could walk away from you were lucky yes and most people actually died from these beatings because yeah. they were so severe um and and here they are they're making fun of jesus and i just can't help but but think about this you know all the times that we are falsely accused in our lives to where someone looks at us and says well you've done this or you've done that and we say no 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 I didn't do that I didn't do that I, I you know and you try to explain your way out of it Jesus went to the cross and was accused of a lot of things he was absolutely disrespected absolutely just just um treated horribly amen I mean and, and he never opened his mouth he never you know he didn't all he had to do was say I'm done I mean, he could have called legions of angels, Amen. legions, Amen. thousands. They say, what, 72,000 angels? He could have called at any time and stopped this thing. Amen. But you see, there was a plan in place. The Messiah was coming. He was going to be sacrificed for our sin. And it had to take place. He had to get to the cross. And the road that led him to the cross led him through every bit of this, through the beatings, through, through all the things that took place. It led him. And he, was, he knew what he had to to do amen that's amazing that that jesus he did that went through all this he did and and, and, and he had a really because there's a lot of things coming together at this in this story and what jesus was living out you know and it's all part of god's plan that suffering that suffering servant at isaiah 53 and then like yes. you said they were talking the way they they talked to him i mean this was the messiah king yes. out of revelations 19 this is the one that's going to bring judgment one that's going to judge those and this is how they talked to him. They, they mocked him, like Pastor Rick said, and, 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 and beat. This is God. In the flesh. In the flesh. And, and it's so heartbreaking to know that I, I know his love for me, and I love him just, uh, as much as I can as a human. Uh, I feel at, at my best of times. Uh, but it, to know that he did that. It's heart-wrenching. It is. It is. Because, uh, uh, man, just what they did. Like you said, the Romans, and it, you think about crucifixion, because they said it, it used to well, last they were three good or four days. They were good at it, and they would try to keep them alive for days. I mean, this was a terrible punishment. I mean, you know, but they would try to actually keep them alive so that yeah. they would suffer longer. And, that, and, and that's horrible, I mean, it's horrible just, to think terrible. about that, that they were planning to do this to Jesus. That, that, but Jesus did this to fulfill Scripture. Yes. So here you Great. have the Gentiles saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Amen. Right. Let's look at the next piece here. The second teaching point tonight says that the second irony of the crucifixion is that the one who is utterly powerless is transcendently powerful. That it, it, he appears to be completely powerless in this situation, and yet he's, he's God in the flesh. I mean, he is magnificently Man. powerful. I mean, he is, he is God. And yet it, it appears to where he's, he's not. Um, he seems powerless. The, powerless in the midst of this. So Amen. we'll look at verses 32 through 40 in chapter 27. It says this. It says, Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, 
Him they compelled to bear His cross. I mean, I want to stop for a second. Jesus was beaten so bad and so bloodied and everything that they had someone else to help him bear that, that cross member to get him to, the, to Golgotha, to get him there. They, they, they grabbed somebody out of the crowd and said, no, you're going to help him. We're gonna, I mean, isn't that, I mean, you think about this. He had to get there. Amen. He had to get there. And when they had come to the place called Golgotha, Amen. that is to say, place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall, to drink, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. And then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they, they put up over his head the accusation <laughs> written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified, and one on the right and the other on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Mm. I mean, I just, Joey, when I, when I look at this and I see this, you know, he's, he's been beaten so, so terribly. He's been abused so much that they, they, get, they get Simon to, to help him bear the cross so that they can get him to Golgotha so they get him to where they can crucify him and they put up a, a sign over him this is Jesus the king of the Jews and it was the tr this was the accusation the reason they were putting him to death and yet that was exactly mm -hmm. who he was Amen. Uh, I, 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 to, to this second point to make it really to get to, for you to really grasp the full concept yeah, I, I think it helps out to understand where they are at, Golgotha. This was just not somewhere off in the hidden. This was off a main road, outside the Damascus Gate, um, the, the, on the road that runs the east to west, um, east to west road that runs north. Um, this was just right, there, so it was a big thoroughway. There was a lot of people traveling through. Now, this is the end of Passover. So people are starting to travel back, yes. walking past Jesus being crucified. Right. Calling with a him, sign mocking over him, him. And, and, and them not believing who he was. Some of them probably saw some of the miracles that he had done that week. Some of them probably praised and yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna. Right, with the, the palm same branches, ones. right? Amen. On, on Palm Sunday, these are the same ones that they'll walk past him, ridiculing him, because they thought, like others thought, a, 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 a savior that would save them from Rome. But you think about this. So the Gentiles said, Hail, King of the Jews. When they were mocking him and they Amen. dressed yes, him up sir. like a king and beat him and, you know. And then now you have um, Pilate that wants this sign put over him because the accusation. And understand that, like Joey said, this is, the, Golgotha is a place where people are going by. This is mean, the Romans, this was shock effect. They wanted yeah. to make sure you understood. Look, if you do, if you, if you cross us, this is what you get. Amen. Right? I mean, this is, look, <laughs> you talk about hardcore punishment. This is what you get. And that's how they kept um, the people in, in check. And that's how, how they did this because, because they, they, would, they would crucify people in a place and they would leave their bodies on the cross and they would leave them up there for, for birds and, you know, just, I mean, it was terrible what was going on. So now he's up there. So, so they've already said, hail, king of the Jews. The Gentiles are saying this. Now they're saying, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. That's the accusation that's been made against him. That is why he's being crucified Amen. because he's the king of the Jews he's the son of God he's being crucified and then they say to him as they go by you who destroy the temple and build it in three days save yourself if you're the son of God come down from the cross mm. what's so ironic about that statement Joey he could have easily done it he could have easily done it there's a lot of things that uh, you want to point out there because I mean, the point parts out it, it, it's he seemed powerless, but he was transcendently, I can't talk, sorry. Transcendently? Yes, transcendently powerful. Think yes. of the power that man had at the fingertips. I mean, there was more power in his self-control <laughs> than anyone could ever render on earth. It's amazing. When you go back to the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was in prayer, and he said, Father, you know, if you can, you know, take this cup from me 
right? Yes, sir. But not your will, but my will be done. His will had to be done. Amen. His will had to be done. All of this, everything that you're seeing right here was already settled the night before in the garden through Amen. prayer. It was prayer that, that got him there. It was prayer that and it, an angel was sent to strengthen him while he was there. I mean, that was, he had to, to fight the battle. The battle was fought then. It was already fought. It was already, the Lord had already made up his mind that he would drink from the cup. That he would do exactly what he needed to do as the son of God, as the, the lamb, as the perfect sacrifice. Amen. That he would take the sin of the world upon himself. That he would go to this cross and he would, he would die for mankind. He had to get there. He couldn't come down from the cross. I mean, and, and think about this. If you're the son of God, come down from the cross. You know, if, if, you, if you're the son of God, he was the son of God. And he couldn't come down from the cross because he was the son of God. And he was there reconciling and purchasing back a people Amen. through his sacrifice. Where, where we mess up and where they messed up is that we thought he didn't have no power to get down. The power was staying up there. Yes. That's where the true power was. Because he, he knew that if he came down, which he could have, it, it, our, this now what we do we, would mean nothing. Paul says it's pointless That's if right. Jesus Christ did not die and resurrect again. That's what we right. do is in vain. We'd still be in our sin. Amen. I mean, it, it, he, like I said, it, it took, I mean, think about self-control. I, 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 when I was studying this, I was thinking about, man, I have, I worked on it, and my anger and things have gotten a whole lot better as I have grown closer to Christ. Yes. And I, I think about when my kids were younger, and my son probably can, um, he could, he could, uh, he, he could tell you this is true. I'm um, trying to sit down and work with math problems. Uh, and I'm not bad with math, but the problem is, is that I wasn't patient. You right. sit there and you try to work out a problem and say, listen, I was like, Tucker, this is what it is. You do this step, this step, and you get this answer. Well, he's not getting that answer. He's not any, and, and sometimes he would follow steps and and, and, and it's like, why can't you get it right? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do this? And I wonder in my mind when I read this story, I mean, all the times God has felt that way with me. And when yes. he was up on that cross, Jesus Christ was battling those people in his mind. I mean, he still was in his flesh. Yes. I still, I, and he still, the temptation was probably there just to shut him up. Oh, my God, I can get down and slap you silly boy. But I'm not. I'm right. doing this for your good. I mean, because it's amazing how... Tempted and tried in all ways, and yet without sin. Amen. I mean, he had to take on flesh in order to be the perfect sacrifice for man. And he had to be tempted and tried in all ways, and yet be without sin. He had to fulfill the law. He had to do Amen. all those things. And, and he ha So he's going through this, but he's being tempted in, in the very same way that we are tempted. Amen. And he shows you what true power is. And it's the fruit of the Spirit. He exhibited every part of the fruit of the Spirit that any human can ever ever imagined to do in their yes, lifetime yes. jesus exemplified it yes, in his yes, human life yes, and on this absolutely. cross it showed you every little every bit of power that he had because he could easily got down yes. and say you know what i'm yes. done with you yes. we're going to flood the earth yes. again armless yes. no this time i'm not going to flood the earth i'm going to send fire down and it will consume the earth yes and he didn't that's right love yeah. love is is part of that power that god had for us in his son jesus christ yes. that power how how powerful our God is. You look at the cross and how he stayed up there being mocked by people that, that, that didn't know that how true that what the words they were saying. Man, it's how much love a Savior has for us when we're yet still in our sin, he did that. Man, that's amazing. That's something to get up and shout up about. That's something to jump up and down about. Yes. And, we, and it, we, we can't get excited over nothing anymore. But our Jesus Christ is amazing yes. in the story of the Easter, pa of the passion, and all he's done for us to show us his power is shown through that cross. Yes. Yes. It's truly love. Teaching point number three, the third irony of the crucifixion is that the one who didn't save himself saves others. <laughs> and we'll look at um, verse uh, 41 and 42. It says, likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and the elders said this, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we'll believe him. <laughs> they were really trying to push him to, to be that savior that would reign on earth. It's amazing, Jesus... 
how they felt like he, once again, like he was powerless that he couldn't save. How, if he can't save himself, how can he save us? That's right. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think Jesus, he says, find my notes, I'm sorry. John verse chapter 8, verse 23 says, you are from below, I'm from above. You are from this world, I am not of this world. This is not God's, this is not Jesus' kingdom. It's not here. This is not here on this earth. Uh, and for people to, to pray to, and want to live their life to the fullest here and to have everything they can here, you're living a lie. You're living something that's not even, it's not even, it wouldn't come up to Jesus' footstool. And yet, you want it, we want it so bad, but Jesus, we have to look at Jesus for who he is. Yes. The salvation of a Savior comes from, from him suffering, because someone had to suffer. Someone had to pay the debt. Scripture said it had to be a perfect, spotless lamb. Yeah. And that's what Jesus was. And this was. was the Passover, right? So, Amen. I mean, so that's what they're, they're talking about, the, the blood being upon the doorpost. And it, that anyone who has the blood upon the doorpost, why the angel of death will pass over. And, and we think about Jesus Christ as our Passover lamb. Amen. He's the one that, that shed his blood for us that we might be forgiven, that we might be cleansed, that we might have eternal life through his sacrifice. And so we have to, we have to understand who he was, and it, he couldn't come down from the cross. This was something that had to happen. I mean, this was something that had been prophesied. And you're right, Joey, in Isaiah 53, talking about a suffering servant, talking about one that was going to die for the sins of the world. Why? That's who he was, and, and nobody could understand that. They couldn't get their mind around that because they weren't looking for that kind of Messiah. No. They were looking for a political um Someone that was going to run the Romans out. Someone that was going to be a great king here. There was going to be an incredible kingdom. All these things. Amen. And that's not what Jesus came for. Jesus came to forgive our sins. To cleanse us. To watch us. To give us eternal life. And, and, and so much bigger than anything that we have here. Because see, we always look at everything through the eyes of flesh. And we think that it's, it's not here. We are supposed to be passing through. We're just sojourners. We're just passing through. Amen. And there's going to come a day when we are going to go home and we're going to be with him. And that's where we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be with him. Amen. And where he is, when we're absent from the body, we'll be present with the Lord. And that's where we're supposed to be. That's amazing. I, could you look at the whole life of, of Jesus and say, well, if he can't save himself, Jesus was all about saving people from their sin. Yes. He was named Jesus out of Matthew chapter 1 right. because, because Jesus means Savior. That's I right. gave Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. I mean, it, when he went and Think about that. People, God with us, the one that will save us from our sins. God came amen. down, took on flesh. He's with us. He's the Savior of the world. He is the one. And see, we, we've got to understand that. We've got to get that in our minds and understand that we need a Savior. Amen. Amen. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin are death. It right? Is. Amen. I mean, we, we forget all this stuff. Everybody thinks that, well, you know, I'm not that bad, really. Well, yes, you are. <laughs> I mean, we are depraved. I mean, our hearts desperately wicked. Who can understand it? I mean, you know, we, 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 we think these things, but without a Savior, without Jesus Christ, without the indwelling Holy Spirit of God, man, I mean... <laughs> And, and you try to explain that to people. That's the hardest thing. The hardest thing is not the gospel story. Everybody knows the gospel story. Even the lost people know the gospel story. The hardest thing is to convince someone they need a Savior. Amen. And these same people that we're trying to convince today were the very same ones that walked by Jesus and saw him up there. Oh, look, the sign says that he's the king of the Jews. Ha, ha, ha. If you're the king of the Jews, come on down. Save yourself. You said you'd rebuild the temple in three days. Come on, buddy. Come on down. Now, let's see it. Amen. And the world has the same mindset today. Has that same attitude. And there's yes, people sir. that are dying and well. going to hell because they can't see who he is. Amen. I mean, I mean it's, you know, and, and you just, you're like, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. I, I'm telling you who he is. And, and, and it's like the scales are on their eyes. And until the Holy Spirit of God takes the scales off. Amen. Romans chapter 1. Amen. Verse 18, right. it says that their, their unrighteousness suppresses the truth. It's their wrongful sins. It's what keeps them from seeing what God is trying to do. They asked the question. They said, if you're the king, come down and show me. It's the same question you hear today when you, buy, you see apologetics and people say, well, if I saw if I saw somebody raised from the dead, if I saw somebody oh, healed, yeah, I'd believe then. I'd believe it. Right, I'd believe, I'd believe then. It. Really? Is, yeah, really? Is, is, is that really, really what you'd believe? No. The problem is not seeing or faith, faith in that aspect. It's them and their unrighteousness. Right. It's them, it, it, the, it, the stubbornness of their hearts, the, 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 how sin hardens our hearts. It's pride, too. 
Amen. Because a lot of people are so prideful. They don't want to, they don't, they don't need, I don't need a Savior. I'm fine just the way I am. I'm living, I'm living a good life. I, just, I don't need all that. I, I don't need all that. And they, they're pridefully, you know, that pride's going to get them though. Amen. I mean, if they keep right on in that mindset, in that vein, I mean, you know, everybody has a day of visitation, sometimes more than one, but there's going to come a day when your conscience will be seared by the sin in your life and God will no longer be able to get through that. Amen. Then what you do? We, we live in a lost world that, that, yes. that doesn't want to come yes. to realization they're lost. Yes. Um, it, it, you can see the falling away. I, I, I really believe that, that America itself is in judgment. Uh, with the way it, our, 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 our society, our culture is going away from God, it, it has been that way for a, long, a while now. I, I, I pray, that, I pray that, that, that our unrighteousness in this world, I pray for the Christians to pray, get on their knees, humble themselves for God to heal this land. I, I, I pray that it, it, we can be who God calls us to be and, and, and kind of help close that gap between the world and, the ch and, and God. Let the church be the church. And, and let people see that, that we need a Savior. That it's the Savior that makes us right. Yes. It's the Savior. Yes. It's not our, we, we lose our pride. We die to ourselves. Uh, and because it, it, if Jesus had saved himself, like we said, there, there would be no need. To, he would, he would, the world would be lost. Uh, if Jesus, Jesus could have saved himself easily, it wasn't a physical part of it. But if he saved himself, he couldn't have saved us. Amen. I mean, you, it's that moral. I mean, you know, he, if he saved himself, he couldn't have saved us. It was one way or the other. I mean, you, you know, he had to be the sacrifice Amen. to save us. And he, he was he that was the higher calling. That was what he was there for His was was will. to come to, to save us, not to save himself. It's, he was going to give his life for for man. And, and so we, we have to understand that. Now, the problem is, is that in the midst of all of this, the world's looking on and the world's mocking and the people are mocking and the priests are mocking and the scribes and the Pharisees and all of them are mocking. And yet Jesus is going and doing exactly what he needs to do Amen. to save the world. And I think that's a, oh man, a great roadmap for the Christian church right now. Um, too many of us get caught up in the world's problems, the culture and, 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 and we take our hands away from the plow and quit working for Christ. Quit working God's will. When we need to stay steadfast, praying, reading His Word, and continue to do His will, do His bidding, because when we get caught up, when we get thrown into political mess, and, into what the world is all fussing about, we get our eyes away from what God wants us to do. Amen. And the kingdom, Christ's kingdom, suffers for it. And, and we, think we're, uh, we think we're on a holy or a righteous um, plan to do what God, God's will, what we think God's will, but it's not. God shows us. He, he stayed the course. He per persevered because he knew what God's will was. And he knew what we needed. Amen. We needed a Savior. We needed, we needed that, that, that lamb that was going to take away the sins of the world. We needed Jesus Christ. He, he was sent to us for that very express reason. He, he came to us. And, and so we have to understand that, that the, through the midst of all of this, that there was, there was a reason that he was, he was here. He was, he was doing the Father's will. Amen. I mean, and that, that's something we need to understand, that, that, that Jesus was doing the Father's will. And we in our lives, we need to decide, where is, where is God's will in your life? Where, 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 where on the spectrum of, of when you get up every day and you decide, what am I going to do? Uh, or, or, you know, where, where does God's will fall in there someplace? I would hope someplace in Amen. there. But where does that fall in? Do you do what God calls you to do? Because, see, there's so many times where, we, where God places people in our lives, situations, things that we should be praying for folks or witnessing to people or doing for one another or whatever it might be, but it's inconvenient. So we're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Because, but, but God is putting them there. And we pray all the time, Lord, put someone in my path that I can show them Jesus Christ. Amen. And then what do we do? As soon as they show up, we, we bump them to the side. Oh, I'm busy right now. I can't handle your problem. I got my own problems. I got my own mess I got to deal with. No, 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 no. You're not here for your own mess. You're here to lead people to Jesus Christ. There Amen. is going to come a judgment day. And when that day comes and those books are open, you better, you know, your name better be in the book of life. Amen. Hey, man, I mean, that's, that's something that we need to be striving for. We need to be pointing people in that direction. Let them know that there is going to be a judgment. There is going to be a day. There will be an end. It will come. Amen. That's true. And he will judge with righteous judgment. There'll be no favoritism. It'll be righteous judgment.
Do you know me as your Lord and Savior? Would be the defining principle. Amen. Jesus shows us yes. that to save others, he, he couldn't save himself. And he was willing to do it. And he was willing to walk it. What he did for us. See, that was my whole thing, y'all. I'm going to tell you now. That, that, and that, that's what, when, when I, I can understand God because I can look at this world and I can tell that there's a creator. Mm. I can tell that there's, there's gravity. Okay, that's a, that's a known force. Um, there, there, there's, there's the speed of light. It's a known for all these things. There's all these um, laws in nature, all this stuff. It's all lined up in such a way that you can look at it and you know that there is a designer, that there's someone behind that. God's behind all that. But my problem was always with Jesus. If he was the son of God, why did he allow himself to be crucified? Why do you allow himself to be beaten, to be spat upon, to be nailed to a cross? Why do you allow him to talk to him that way? Why did Amen. he do all those things? And, 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 and when I first started trying to find Christ in the midst of that, I had a problem with that because I wanted him to be the Savior like they wanted. I wanted him to come and say, all right, legions, angels, come on down, wipe these people out. We're going to call down fire. Amen. And see, I can never understand that part. And until I understand or understood that Jesus Christ came to save me, and that the only way he could save me was to stay on that cross, then I understood it. Then I realized, you got to know who Jesus is, y'all. you got to know who he is. you got to know him. I'm here to tell you, Amen. when I listen to people talk, I listen for the name, the name of Jesus. Because that name... That's where salvation comes. That's where the power comes from. That's where all these things come through the name of Jesus. And we got to be listening for that name. Amen. That name above every name. Amen. The name of Jesus. He's the one. Who do you trust? That's, I That's mean, right. Who do you trust? Because I, I, think, I, I think we all battle with that, Pastor, like you yes. said, to, to some extent. Um, knowing who we are and knowing who he is. Absolutely. Um, I think once, kind of go with you, I, once I realized who I was, Oh, Man, it yeah. was easy that I, yeah. I, he had to stay yeah. up there. Man, he, I, I, because I'm not saving myself. That's right. I, I'm nowhere near. Nope. Can't save yourself. Spotless. Cannot save yourself. As Christ said. Man. Can't do it. Jesus is amazing. Praise the love. Lord. Amen. All right. How about teaching point number four, Brother Joey? It says, the fourth irony of the crucifixion is that the one who cries out in despair trusts in God. I mean, I, I, I listened to this um, in, in verse... 43, Amen. and I'm going to read the rest of, of what we've got here because I think we just need to read the rest. Um, 43, it says, he trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. And even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. And the rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those who saw him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him were there looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and, Mary, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Wow. I mean, I look at, I look at all this and, and, and they, they, you know, they say he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he'll have him, for he said, I am the son of God. But he was exactly where the father needed him to be. Amen. Amen. It's powerful. It is. Pastor Rick, looking at this and, and, and realizing 
uh, the agony that he was going through just to breathe. And, and I know you've said this before, but if you haven't heard, you know, the, the, just the, I guess the physiology of, of the human body and what it goes through on the cross. Um, spasms is what really hurts the most, they said at first, is that you know, he's struggling to breathe. The way your hands are nailed on and your feet are nailed, you have to push up on, the, yeah. on your feet so you can take a breath. Um, and after a while, you get spasms and you fall back down and you can't breathe. Um, the pain our Savior went through, calling out, and it wasn't just physical pain. I, I, I believe he, 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 at some point... Man, I, at some point, the physical body stops I, 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 and, and it's, it, through exhaustion, through, through, through all uh, mentally. But it, it's really the pain that he took on of sin yeah. um, through this. And, they, and they, they still mocked him. They still mocked him um, because they he's calling out for Elijah. Let's see if Elijah comes. Yes. And, and, and as he cried out to him, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's right. In the midst of, in the midst of it all, that sin that G, God, our God had to look away from that He took on that was not just mine, but yours. That sin that that that, that none of us will uh, truly understand what that feels like, because none of us will ever bear that burden unless That's you right. unless you decide not to follow Christ. Then you'll see what that is like. Right. Us believers, it's, it's one of the things that I hold true to to who he is and his love for me, that he went through something that he did not have to because he loved me. That's right. And it I, talks and says, Joey, that the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. I want you to think about that. The mercy seat was opened up to amen. mankind. I mean, the, the way was there that, that Jesus Christ, you know, was the, was the lamb that took on the sin of the world. And then the, the mercy seat was opened up to all mankind that they would be able to enter in they would be able to, uh, to, to, to have that relationship with him through the midst of all of this. That it, it went from some place that was hidden to where a priest could only go in one time a year to now it was, it was torn in such a way that it was opened up for mankind. That they could, they could have a way, a way in. And I think about that, you know, that, that God's um, showing them that through the midst of this. Uh. I want to draw attention to, to Psalm chapter 22. I, he yes, he kind of goes through this a lot, but 20, uh, verse 1 in that Psalm chapter 22 is where really what he, is what he quotes. And, and he wants to draw us to our attention, and not just our attention, but I believe the, the Jews that, that, that were there to the attention. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, and it continues on. David continues on. Now, that, remember that David's a prophetic um, uh, man in, in, the Jew, in the eyes of Jews. They, they, even today, the rabbis today know that his, his work in Psalms were very prophetic, and he talks about the dogs gathering around him. Yes. Uh, and, and, and he gives so much prophecy to who Jesus was, what was going to happen this day. And this was a thousand years yes. before this yes. ever happened. Jesus drew their attention to say, listen, this is who I am, to secure in your mind when you look back on this day that you know that I am from the lineage of David that I'm the one that they spoke about to Abraham and Isaac that would That's come right. up as the Messiah, the Savior. That's what he wants to draw his attention to. I, I, and I know this kind of goes into that uh, maybe he was battling with flesh and stuff like that. But I, at this point, I knew my God, was, it, it, at that point, that was my God. To bear the, the burden of all the sin, to bear the burden for, I mean, think about it. none of us on earth right now has ever felt God look away. God's eye has been on every person yeah. since the beginning of the creation except Jesus Christ on this cross. And that's the pain that he felt. That's what it drove him to say, that's my right. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And see, this, the Psalm 22 was kind of like the 23rd Psalm for us. They, was, it, they all knew it and they quoted it. And so when he, when he quoted that, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They could have they quoted the rest back. And so as we, <laughs> as, we, as we go through this, you know, and we, verse 6 says, But I'm a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. 
him. I mean, you know, you, you're going through all. They knew this. And, and if we go down a little bit, a bit, little bit further in verse 14, it says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue clings to my jaws and you've brought me to the dust of death. I mean, I want you to think about Jesus and how parched he Amen. was at that time because he's, he's saying, Ali, Ali, you know, he, he's talking about, you know, he's calling out to God, but they're thinking he's calling to Elijah when he's not calling to Elijah at all. He's, he's quoting from the 22nd Psalm and, and speaking this, but they're hearing because his tongue is clinging to his mouth. I mean, he can't hardly speak. It's, it's, it's um, verse 16, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. I mean, I want you to think about all of those standing around him, looking at him. If he's, if he's the yeah. son of God, come down from there. Save yourself. Do all. I mean, all of that's going on. And then it says this. They pierced my hands and my feet. I count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. And I want you to think about all of that. That that, that is what they're telling us right there. And so we just we need to um, to look at that and see that uh, through the midst of this this word that we're we're going through tonight. All of that is there. Amen, amen. So as we go through this this evening, y'all, and we think about what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. I want to remind everyone of what God did. That He was willing to take on flesh and live among us. That He was willing to go through all of this that we might have eternal life. So as we close this evening and we come together, I just pray that, that each one will absolutely Search themselves tonight and know what Christ has done for them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Father God, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for everything that you've done for us. That you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for us. That we might be cleansed, that we might be forgiven that we might have eternal life. And Father, we thank you that you had a plan for your son, and it wasn't too much for him to give his life for each one of us. That he stayed upon the cross until the very end, until he gave up his spirit. No one took his life from him. He gave his life up. And so, Father, I thank you for that tonight. I thank you for that sacrifice. And Lord, I pray for those that are listening right now that if they don't know you as their Lord and Savior, that maybe tonight might be that night. That tonight might be that time that they take you as their Savior. So, Father, I just thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you that it's been preserved, and I thank you that we can go through it, that we can read it, that we can allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us through it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. All right, well, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for our Wednesday night round table. I pray that this teaching has blessed you and encouraged you. And I also want to remind you that we have a live worship service on Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. And if you can't catch it live, well, you can always catch the replays throughout the week. Now I just ask that you be encouraged this week, that you be blessed, and I pray that you experience the peace of God, the presence of God, and the blessings of God in all that you do throughout the week. Thank <laughs> you.